Having covered the standardized approach, let us review the key changes in IMA approach which is nothing but the expected shortfall method. 1. Enhanced model approval process. Under the revised framework, model approval is granted at the trading desk level. A trading desk internal model must pass two tests. Profit and loss attribution is a test to determine whether the internal model comprehensively measures the risks that drive the daily profits and losses of the trading desk. Back testing is a test to determine if the risk estimated by the internal model is sufficiently conservative to cover observed trading losses. Trading desks with internal models that fail these tests must use the standardized approach. Expected shortfall. Expected shortfall is designed to address all the three key issues so far like tail risk, market illiquidity, and liberal diversification benefit issues. Tail risk, value at risk or VAR, calculates the maximum loss expected or worst case scenario on an investment over a given time period and given a specific degree of confidence. So it doesn't count the losses that happen beyond that confidence level. Thus, it ignores the tail event. In the expected shortfall graph, let us assume that the red line is at 97.5%. At this confidence level, VAR measures the maximum loss of 100 million. Other way of saying this is only in 2.5% times the loss exceeded by 100 million. However, ES calculates the average loss above this confidence level. In other words, above 100 million. So for a given confidence level, ES is more than the combined VAR and stressed VAR, market liquidity risk. The current framework computes a 10-day VAR it is assuming that a position can be liquidated without affecting market prices in a period of 10 days, which is incorrect in the period of stress. To recognize the risk of market illiquidity, the ES measure prescribes different liquidity horizons for different risk factors. Diversification issue. There is a liberal recognition of the risk reducing effects of hedging and diversification. VAR has no constraint in recognizing hedging and diversification benefits across different asset classes, example equities and forex. Based on estimates of correlations derived from pre-crisis historical data. In the crisis, the diversification effects that were based on historical data disappeared. Under ES, it calculates two versions of ES, one with full diversification, which is unconstrained, and another with zero diversification, which is constrained, and takes the average. This addresses the diversification issue also. Part 3. Limits on the modeling of illiquidity and unobservable risk factors. The Basel 2.5 VAR approach allows banks to model all risks inherent in their trading portfolio. NMRFs are excluded from the ES calculation. Instead, the capital requirement for each NMRF is determined by means of a stress test. Risk factors that do not have sufficient observable market data are deemed to be non-modelable. Revised treatment of default risk. Even in IMA approach, we are required to compute the default risk charge. We are going to use VAR method at 99% confidence level. Unlike in standardized approach, wherein we are using LGD and notional amount, here we shall use the VAR model. Internal model approach is based on expected shortfall method. However, only the default capital charge portion uses VAR. Point 4. Now let us discuss the output floor, which is one of the very significant change which has been brought in Basel IV. The revised output floor limits the amount of capital benefit a bank can obtain from its use of internal models relative to using the standardized approaches. In the example given, if the capital charge under STD approach is 100 million and IMA is 60 million, bank need to consider 72.5 million is the capital instead of 60 million due to, due to the output floor. This limits the benefit of a bank can gain from using internal models to 27.5%.
output floor is designed to reduce the inconsistency in RWAs, not justified by the risk fundamentals. This was the most controversial aspect of the package, which some BCBS members initially resisting to accept this proposal. Due to the potential impact of the floor, BCBS has agreed to implement the floor over a phased-end period of five years. This is in brief about the IMA approach under FRTB.